All right, I think we got to start this one by drinking some tea on camera. I don't think we've done that in a while. So, you know, that's always a good way to start a video. Like, super strong start, get the people's attention with a nice cup of tea. I think that's how it works. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Do You Know This Move? And today I got a good one. Uh, this, I mean, I think they're all cool. Like, I'm picking out moves that I think are, are awesome, so they're all good, but... This is one that I've played a lot. Oh, and that's way too loud. Let's turn that down again. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about one of these 3-3 three, three Invasion Joseki that all the robots love and are all the rage being played in all sorts of Go games. And it's one that I've shown on this channel before. It's not, it's not again, the newest move. But, oh man, did the robots sort of legitimize it. And it's sort of taken over in the last three years. So... Uh, this is this is the Joseki, and at this point, what, Black has a few options, namely A, uh, B is playable. Yes, I know it's very out of fashion right now just to play the the B to C extension for Black, um, but there are variations that are still playable, and one of which we're actually going to talk about. And C, and I think those are those are basically it. <laughs> if you already have something over here as Black, of course, there's also D, but these are the three continuations that we're used to seeing in this formation. And today we're going to talk about this A, because the move that I want to introduce to you today, if you've never seen it before, and explore further with you if you already have, is this one. And oh man, this is this is dirty. <laughs> like this, this is just like one of those robot moves that feels dirty because it's not really legitimate, right? Black can cut, like it leaves cuts. <laughs> it can be cut immediately, in fact. And so on one hand, it's like an overplay. Like if we were wine 10 years ago and I was teaching you go and you played this in a game, I would say overplay, you know, this is, this is just wrong. The legitimate move we'd expect is this one. Uh, possibly crawling, but Usually this is a little bit faster and, and settles the position a little more directly. So this is this is the normal continuation. In this in this case, black can't do anything. This group is super solid. There's no cuts, right? We can. Whoops, that's not the move. <laughs> I mean, uh, white doesn't even have to play again. But if white were to continue in the corner, there you go. It's a super solid. Like black gets thickness, white gets corner. Everybody, that's it. There's nothing else to discuss. But with this one, yeah, there's a discussion. And this is what the robots are really good at, right? Is leaving these intentional weaknesses that are actually really cumbersome to take advantage of. And before we go into sort of the main variation that comes out of this, if there is a main variation, uh, I want to rewind a little bit and compare to this B variation. When black plays there, white plays here, black has a couple choices here, but Realistically, this is the one that's going to happen most often. And I want you to notice this shape that comes out. And this is Joseki. Well, we're going to play the, the continuation. And often, if white's going to continue local, which is pretty common, white will play here. Okay, so keep this formation in mind. Like, like take a mental picture with it with your brain. Let's go back to our variation. When white skips a step here. Let's say black tries to cut this immediately, and again plays here, and does this. Voila, it's the exact same. So this, it like in, in let's say that again, what I think is sort of the most normal main line, actually transposes exactly to a Joseki we already know and love. <laughs> so what's what's the big deal here? If this move, for white, just goes back to a Joseki we already know. Um, what, like, so what? Well, the key to understanding why this move is so cool and why you should know this move is that in this variation, it's black who decides to go into this variation, right? It's black who forces this direction and basically forces white to take the outside and black takes the corner. In this case, it's white who gets to decide, right, by playing this move, right? White is saying, oh, I, you know, if, you're, if you want to cut through here, you can. I'm going to force it into this Joseki we already know. So the question is, who is this Joseki good for? And 
the answer might surprise you because in the earliest stages of the game, uh, if we're still in the opening, we're still in Joseki phase, this is good for white. I know it looks like it's good for black because black got to capture three stones. Like how many Josekis do you have to sacrifice three stones in the corner and still give your opponent the corner? And this thickness, let's be real, it's not the most solid thickness in the world. Yes, it's a Panuki, but it's low. We're talking about a Panuki on the second line. <laughs> if this is a Panuki in the middle of the board, like no questions asked, right? Like like white is, white is really good. That Panuki is going to exert influence all over the board. But this Panuki shape, hmm... It's trapped along the edge. Black actually kind of has a wall here, so what's the big deal? Well, it's that, number one, this is still strong, and there's actually still Aji down here with these three stones. Even though they're dead, locally, temporarily, uh, white can still use them. And, and here's even the most direct way of Black Hanes to limit this group. You can actually see that this white response, this very simple response, is actually really hard for black to respond to. Uh, like black has to extend again. Black would love to double Hane, right? And just expand this top influence. But this is an overplay. Black cannot block, otherwise black dies. So if black dies, <laughs> that means white will actually win the corner and take the entire corner back. Wow, okay. So you've never seen this before. This is this is some Aji to deal with. And let's say white just keeps pushing here and forces black to, uh, you know, take six line territory. Usually that's pretty good for black. But what happens if white starts playing moves like this? Well, black might have to fix this Aji. And if white has more strength on the outside, maybe black has to fix the Aji again. And you can see pretty quickly that there, because of these defects, white actually has something to work with. White can invade deeply. And what do you know about robots? Well, they're really good at using every little bit of Aji on these really deep, just crazy invasions. And so the robots will calculate this and figure it out and go, oh, look at all the Aji down here. This is not nearly as good for black as it is for white. Now, as the game progresses, there's something interesting that goes on. This territory does become worth more as the game progresses. Each move, at least at the very high level theory of Go, should become smaller and smaller in terms of point value. And so there is a point where the, these corner points are worth more than the influence. As more groups become safe and more territory becomes developed and the just the size of the board becomes smaller, these cash in hand kind of points become bigger. And so there is a point where this is good for black, but at the start of the game, it is not. It's actually good for white. And I want you to keep that in mind. So if you're black and you know that this is good for white, should you play this? Mm, probably not. I mean, again, we're talking about, you know, fractions of a percentage of a point. Um, but you can always do this later, too. So you might not, even though, even though this cut is glaring, <laughs> you might want to leave it for later. Oh, uh, there's a caveat here that I totally glossed over. Let's revisit it. Um, in all these variations, I had black being captured on this side. But what happens if white defends this way? Well, now this is ladder dependent. And so you do want to play this as black. You do want to push through here primarily when you have control of this ladder. Because if white does need to live here, uh, this thickness, we talked about Panuki on the second line not being as good as one in the center. Well, this was a third on, on the third line connected to a wall. Really strong. <laughs> Super duper strong. Like black just has command of everything in this quadrant of the board now. Uh, white has to work really hard to do anything in this neighborhood. Um, but again, black, if black doesn't have a ladder, this doesn't necessarily work. And so this, this comes with a caveat, that white can play this, uh, particularly when white has a ladder. And so it's even better uh, than this variation for white. Because, well, I guess I guess it's the same. <laughs> it's the exact same. It transposes. Never mind. <laughs> I lied. Uh, but still, uh, normally black won't play this unless black has the ladder. So, and it's black's choice to play this way, right? Otherwise, black could just extend. And in this case, when black extends here, just usually black's looking to settle and leave and take sente. Like when black plays this extension, black's just like, "Yeah, I got other shit to do. <laughs> let me let me just take the corner." But white's asking for a little bit more here, and that makes black very annoyed. And so when black is trying to do something else on the, on the other side of the board or extend from this wall, or unite the top into a moyo. Oh man, this is just like, ugh. <laughs> black can still get what black wants, right, by playing a move like this. But, 
this might, we're giving white a lot of points in this case. Yes, there is still a cut. The cut works a little bit differently in this variation. Uh, for instance, let me show you. For, assuming white want to keep, want, wants to keep the corner, uh, you have to know this Tesuji to uh, get black his perfected wall. And again, this territory is medium. It's not huge, it's not small. Uh, looks like one, two, three, four, five, uh, 11 points for white. Um, white should probably also play here because getting sealed in is pretty nasty. <laughs> um, if white plays somewhere else, black's gonna probably do that and get a wall on two sides. Something along those lines. Uh, so black can push again, and it's still not bad for either player, it's, but it is perhaps a little bit better for white, um, just because the territory is going to be bigger. So again, black can take sente, but it's going to co cost black a few extra points, essentially. So what a cool move, right? Did you know this move? Um, I think, let's see, can we find any other variations we should worry about? Uh, oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, another opportunity for black here. If, if black doesn't like any of this, let's say black doesn't have the ladder, and black isn't really interested in doing something globally, uh, black also has this move, which is actually surprisingly good. <laughs> it's not necessarily as good as just cutting and taking the corner to begin with. Um, this is taking the corner in a very small way, but it does, it does still accomplish that. Um, it can be hard for white to answer, because if white answers like this, well, uh, now there's we can, we can always revert. Let's, let's put it that way. This exchange actually doesn't really matter a whole lot. Um, white, in this case, should probably just connect, uh, but then black can take the corner very simply this way. So, uh, again, if black doesn't have a ladder and can't play the other variation, there is still a way for black to to regain some of the territory in the corner, but this this stick and a little bit of wall here for white is actually quite nice. Uh, it's Even though it's undercut and black can reduce all these points later, this is actually quite a strong group, and these three stones are not that strong. These three stones are not actually projecting as much as these two stones are. Even though it looks like they should, it's because they have this defect here that white can exploit. Um, so this is another move for black to consider. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you don't like this, <laughs> and you don't want to push cut, and you kind of want a simple exchange, uh, and then take sente, maybe here, this is this is still a fine place to take sente, um, you can do that. But you can also leave this as black, especially if you're playing a balancing move. So, uh, yeah. Did you know this move? Add it to your repertoire. It's, it's a really nice little wrinkle. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily absolutely punish people who just want to take sente, build a wall, and take sente. But if you're willing to do a little bit more, uh, encourage a little more complication, and especially if you have the ladder, man, jumping out like this can make your opponent very frustrated. So, anyway, I hope you enjoy these little uh, snippets of, of Do You Know This Move? I'm having a lot of fun doing them prepare, and preparing them all for you. So, you know, keep on coming back for more. Thanks for watching. Happy going.